Hey guys, welcome back to the MCUHQ. The time is finally here. Spider-Man No Way Home has released, and now it's my turn to review the movie. So, uh, if you have not seen it, don't worry. This is going to be non-spoiler. So, watch this video, then go watch the movie so you don't get spoiled by Twitter, YouTube. YouTube's really bad. TikTok, I've heard, is even worse. Then come back and watch the spoiler review I'm going to do tomorrow because I'm seeing the movie again and I want to process it more before I make my spoiler video. Now I will say that this is a very hard movie to talk about. Um, it, I have to be very careful with what I say and I went through my script for this and we're good. There's no spoilers. If anything seems vague, that's because I literally cannot mention it without spoiling it. But I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do my best, so let's hop into this review. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. The first thing I need to say about this movie is that it pretty much addressed all the issues I've had with Spidey in the MCU. The issues I had with Homecoming and Far From Home, they were addressed and they were not just addressed, they were fixed in this movie. I was impressed with this movie from start to finish with what it was doing. It had its slip-ups, yeah, but we can disregard those two videos I made worrying about this movie because basically everything I was worried about, they handled very well in this movie. It, it almost feels like at certain points that they took criticism they've been hearing for years and then did everything they could to address that criticism. And central to every Spider-Man film always has to be Peter Parker. So let's talk about Peter in this movie, or I guess let's talk about Tom Holland in this movie. Tom Holland is so good in this movie. He gives the best performance of his career. And trust me, when you, you guys are like now, you're like, oh yeah, of course it's good performance. Wait until you see the movie. It's a better performance than you would possibly think it is. Zendaya and Jacob Batalone are also really good, Zendaya especially. And they get to get on, in on the action in this movie. It's cool. We don't just have the guy in the chair and the love interest. They do help out with the plot. They are helping Peter in every way they can. And yeah, sure, they're not throwing punches because obviously Ned ain't gonna fight the Green Goblin or Doc Ock and win, but they're helping in every way they can. And it's cool to see them get to be more in the spotlight and more in on the action in this film. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing that. And the chemistry between Peter and MJ in this movie you get why they like each other. Because in Far From Home it starts and they like each other, but you don't really have any context for it and you don't really see too much of the chemistry in Far From Home. In this movie, on the other hand, they have, like, you can see why Peter and MJ like each other so much. Every scene when the two of them are together, you can just feel the chemistry oozing off the screen. And I think I know part of the reason why there's so much chemistry between them in this movie. And I need to give a shout out to Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. I've not been a big fan of MCU Aunt May, but this movie really made me care about Aunt May. Marissa Tomei gave it her all in the role. There's one scene in particular between her and Tom Holland. I don't even know how far into the movie because it was moving so quick. But there was one scene between the two of them that might just be my favorite scene in the movie. And yeah, Aunt May got to do stuff in this movie. She was important to the movie. She felt more like a character and less of someone who just needs to be in the movie because she's Aunt May. Always great to see Aunt May get to have more of a character, more of a personality, and have me feel for a character I haven't felt a thing for since she was first introduced. I didn't think they would do it, but they did. Now. Anything in the trailer, in this review, is fair game. So, if it happens in the trailer, I'm gonna mention it in my non-spoiler review. So yes, this movie sees the return of several villains from different Spider-Man movies. We get Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Sandman, Electro, Lizard. We get those guys coming back for this, and it kind of links together all three of the Spider-Man generations seeing People you didn't think you'd ever see back in the role. Alfred Molina 
someone you never thought you'd see back is Doc Ock. It's 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 so cool to see them all return and a lot of them just f fall right back into these roles so well. Willem Dafoe especially was fantastic and I think Green Goblin in this movie was better than Green Goblin in the original. Anytime Green Goblin was on screen in this movie, I would have chills. Like, not like the hyped up chills. Like, it was chilling every time. He was just, he was had such a presence on screen. He was terrifying. I feared for all the characters in the scene when Green Goblin would come into the fold. It was incredible and Yes, it's on the poster. Willem Dafoe does get to do some face acting in this movie. He's not in the helmet the whole time, and that elevated it just that much more. You all know how you make an already sadistic and terrifying villain more sadistic and terrifying? Let Willem Dafoe use his face in the role, and it is even better. But not, does every villain need to be here? That's the thing, because Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Electro, they have depth, but Sandman and Lizard, feel like they're just kind of there to fill out the roster. Lizard especially, Sandman has some depth to him, but I feel like it's those two. There, there's, I kind of understand at least why Sandman was there, why they needed him there, but I feel like if you took those two out of the story, it wouldn't really change much. And I was pleasantly surprised by the fact that this movie did not throw away these villains' arcs. I expected going in that it would kind of be the Rise of Skywalker thing, where the Rise of Skywalker ruined Anakin's arc in favor of giving it to someone else. I thought the movie would ruin, uh, like, Doc Ock's arc and ruin what Toby did for Doc Ock just so Tom could then do that same thing in his own movie. But luckily, it's not like that. The villains in the movie, those arcs that they've been through are crucial to their characters, and it's addressed and it's brought up numerous times in the movie, and it is a big factor in the story. They did not forget the arcs of these characters. They used them to make the characters even better, and that's why I say people like Green Goblin are better in this movie, because they have the depth of not just what we see in this movie, but they have the depth of what we've seen from them in previous movies coming into this movie that they can add on to their characters. I will say though, there are some lines people say and some things characters do uh, that feel very, very fan service-y uh, to the point that a lot of the times they're trying going for like a chuckle or a cheer out of the audience just for the sake of it. Uh, I know there was, a couple lines in particular, one of them served the story actually, so I'll let that slide, but there, there was one thing said by a certain character that was just designed to get a chuckle out of the audience and make us do the Leonardo DiCaprio thing. Because yeah, I can't talk about this movie and not talk about the fan service. There is a lot of fan service in this movie, but it's kind of the good kind of fan service. Like as I mentioned, there's parts where it's like, you just put that in just as fan service and it's not really necessary, but there are things in this movie that are more the good type of fan service where it exists just to make us happy, but also does serve the story. And a lot of it I can't talk about. And when we have this many villains and we have this much going on, we're bound to get some cool action. You've seen in the trailers, the bridge fight, the fight on the Statue of Liberty. Well, it's pretty cool. Homecoming and Far From Home did not have the greatest action. I think Homecoming's action was pretty dull, like the fight scenes were my least favorite parts of the movie. Far From Home, it was entertaining action, but I don't find myself ever wanting to re-watch it, right? Like Spidey does some cool stuff in that final fight with Mysterio, but it's just kind of boring to look at, and after you've seen it like a couple times, you're just kind of sick of it. This movie, there are fights I'm going to rewatch until the day I die. Uh, the bridge fight with Doc Ock, phenomenal. Uh, there's this fight in an apartment that was brutal and was a great fight. And just the way it was filmed and choreographed and everything about it was such a cool fight. And of course, the third act of this movie is so cool. I can't even put into words how cool the third act of this movie was. It was a serious step up. The, the action in this film was a serious step up from what we've seen from Spider-Man in the other MCU movies. And I hope that 
in the next movies they do, because Amy Pascal has confirmed more movies, I hope in the next movies they do that the action is more akin to what we've seen in No Way Home. And Doctor Strange is important to kickstarting the plot of this movie, and this leads into one of the big worries I had with this movie going in, which is that it was going to be more of a team-up between Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, and Spidey would be too reliant on Doctor Strange, and thankfully, that's not it. This is still very much a Spider-Man movie, and Doctor Strange is not as important to the story of this film. Sure, he helps kickstart it and get everything going, but he's not as important to the story of this film as the trailers would lead you on to believe. If you watch the trailer and you're expecting this to be Spider-Man featuring Doctor Strange or Doctor Strange featuring Spider-Man, you are going to be so happy when you find out that that's not at all what it is. This is very much Spider-Man. And this, this movie gets, it, this movie decided to be a bit more mature, and at certain times, it seems less child-friendly uh, than a couple of the other MCU movies. It is, Tom Holland described it as emotional and brutal, and I can confirm that's what it is. This movie is really not lighthearted. Yes, it has jokes. Yes, it has its moments of levity. Yes, the audience laughs at certain spots, but... There are no moments like the what the f moment that end Homecoming or Far From Home that are just there to make us laugh our asses off. There's no scenes that are really dramatic that are interrupted by a joke. They don't do that. And it's, it's so cool to see that they definitely went a more serious route with this one. This is a more mature movie than the... A lot of the Marvel movies for that matter. Peter gets thrown through the ringer from beginning to end, right? Remember in Spider-Man 2 when everything is going wrong non-stop over and over? That's this movie. From beginning to end, Peter's life is just hell on earth and everything that happens only makes it worse and worse and worse and I loved seeing a more, I wouldn't say broken Peter Parker, but I enjoyed seeing them do that for this Peter because they really haven't done that. And the movie starts with Peter having to deal with his identity being revealed and being framed for murder and it just doesn't let up. And for the first 30 minutes or so, while I was watching this unfold, I wasn't completely sure I was on board with the movie. Uh, it had some really cool stuff, but it also felt like the worst part of the film and I wasn't sure how I was feeling about it. And then there was one scene where right then I started vibing with the movie and it only got better as it went and it redeemed itself. And at the end I was like, yeah, that was a pretty solid movie. For the first time since he's been in the MCU, this has truly felt like Spider-Man. It feels like everyone involved in the film, from John Watts to the writers to Tom Holland, to everyone really, it seemed like everyone understood Spider-Man and they wanted to do everything they could to make this movie as good as they could. It feels, it doesn't feel like it's just a Spider-Man movie. It actually feels like a love letter to Spider-Man. This is hands down, and I mean this when I say it, this is hands down the best Peter Parker story that we've gotten since Spider-Man 2. In fact, this might be the best Peter Parker story we've gotten in a movie, period. Again, I mean that when I say that. At times, this feels like a two and a half hour apology for Spider-Man Far From Home. It seems like they, they took what people didn't like about that movie and they, and, and to make up for their mistake, they just made the greatest Peter Parker story we've seen in a movie. This is a movie where Peter has to deal with the consequences of his own actions Future me editing here, putting in something that I uh, should have said in the review but didn't mention. When I say that uh, Peter has to deal with his own consequences, I don't mean that uh, he doesn't have to deal with consequences as other movies. I mean, the, the whole final fight of Far From Home happens because he gives up Edith. But what I mean is that the problem is fully created by him, by things he does, and there is no other heroes involved in kickstarting that problem. It is entirely Peter. It is very much Peter makes a mistake. Peter faces the consequences of it. Peter has to face his mistake. 
Also in this movie, Spider-Man is ruining Peter's life, but Peter stays Spider-Man because it's the right thing to do. A big reason that shit hits the fan in this movie is because Peter Parker is such a good person that that ends up screwing him over. The movie understands the character of Peter Parker so well that I actually wonder where this has been the last four years, because this is made by the same team that did Homecoming and Far From Home, but it is leagues better. When the very, very emotional ending of the film kicked in, I was both shocked and amazed at what I had just seen. The film blows the other two installments of this trilogy out of the water. It's not even close. This is so much better than both Homecoming and Far From Home. And I would also say that No Way Home makes Homecoming and Far From Home worse because anytime I rewatch those two movies, I'll just l remember the third installment of this trilogy and wonder how they managed to make it so much better, yet still be made by the same people. Spider-Man No Way Home is the best of the trilogy, but it might also be the best Spider-Man film. If it, I still need to sit on it and wait, I'm seeing it again, but as it stands, it is at least in my top three Spider-Man films at the moment, and it could also be a contender for a top three or top five MCU movies. Again, I'm not gonna set anything in stone yet and say definitively because I'm still riding the high of it and I wanna see it again to see how my things change when I'm looking at it in a different light, not waiting for all this cool stuff to happen and just knowing everything that happens and see the build up and the payoff and how everything unfolds. So I'll have that for you later, but as it stands, this is upper echelon, both Spider-Man film and MCU film. When the credits rolled and I got home, I was ready to stop calling this MCU Spider-Man and just go to just straight up calling this Spider-Man. Two weeks ago, I took serious issue with what they were doing with this character, but now I can't wait to see more Spider-Man and I don't ever want to say goodbye to the character. If its first act felt more impactful and was paced better, this film would be getting an A plus from me, but it does have its issues in the first little bit of the movie. I wasn't fully on board until somewhere around the start of the second act, somewhere around there. So it, it can't get an A plus, but I will definitely give Spider-Man No Way Home an A. This one is definitely gonna be one I rewatch a lot, watch scenes from a lot. I was thoroughly impressed with it. This movie was everything I wanted it to be and it was everything I've wanted from Peter Parker since Captain America Civil War. It was a love letter to the character. It felt like an end, it was the end of the trilogy, end of the story, but in a way it also felt like a beginning into the next chapter of Spider-Man and I cannot wait to see where they go with the web head from here. So, Sony, Marvel, John Watts, Tom Holland, all of you, thank you for this movie. It was everything I wanted in an MCU Spider-Man movie, and you gave it to me. I was moved by it, I cheered, I laughed, I got emotional, it was heartbreaking, but it was also super exciting. Y you guys managed to pay off 19 years of cinema in this two and a half hour blockbuster and somehow you guys pulled it off and you made one of the best Peter Parker stories I have ever seen. Well, there you guys have it. That is my review for Spider-Man No Way Home. Go see this movie. I honestly don't understand how anyone can be disappointed by this movie. It deserves the 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. It deserves the scores it is getting. This is an amazing film. Everyone go see it and try not to get spoiled. Go see it if you're comfortable seeing it, right? Obviously not everyone is. Don't go to theater if you don't feel comfortable, but find a way to watch this movie legally, please. Don't pirate it. They worked hard on this movie. It's a love letter to the character and just show them your appreciation for that fact and just go to an actual theater or wait until it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever. But watch this movie. 
legally the way it was meant to be watched. Don't go on friggin' Pirate Bay or 123 movies and do that. Just show your appreciation to everyone who made this film everything it was. Well guys, what did you think of my review for Spider-Man No Way Home? I will of course be doing a spoiler review in the next couple days. I want to tomorrow. Not sure if that's going to be possible. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on my review as well as Spider-Man No Way Home. No spoilers, please, down in the comments below. Also, leave a like on this video, subscribe, click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from the M2HQ. That's going to be it. Have a great day, guys.